Hi everyone and welcome back for another lesson. Today's lesson is about expressing perps. Perps? Could you explain? Ah, okay. It's all about the reason why something is done or used. The aim or intention of something. Menu of the lesson. The components of this lesson are context, positive perps, negative perps, summary, and practice. Context. Listen to this dialogue between Ralph and Beth. Hi Beth, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. What are you doing? I'm revising my lessons. I want to have a good mark in the test. Oh, so you're revising so as to have a good mark in the test? Exactly. Do you think uh, that studying English is important? Yes, of course, it is. Many people in the world today are learning English in order to be able to use the internet. A lot of materials on the web are in English. True. But we should also learn English so that we can understand other cultures. English is the language of the whole world. So if you want to speak with anyone from a different country, you should learn English. Let's study the dialogue. Notice, uh, the speakers here are expressing their perps in doing something. The sentences which express perps are from the dialogue. You are revising so as to have a good mark in the test. The second one, many people in the world today are learning English in order to be able to use the internet. The third one, we should also learn English so that we can understand other cultures. For positive perps, we use in order to, so as to, or for. Look at this example. James works overtime. He wants to improve his situation. We can join and express perps by saying, James works overtime in order to improve his situation. And the same example with another expression this time. James works overtime. He wishes to improve his situation. We join and express perps by saying, James works overtime so as to improve his situation. The same example, this time with he needs to. James works overtime. He needs to improve his situation. We can express perps by saying, James works overtime for improving his situation. Look here. He wants to. He wishes to. He needs to and many other expressions like uh, he desires, he would like, um, okay, he hopes, etc. Now, all these expressions have got that intention that he would like to achieve something. He would like to realize a certain purpose, a certain objective. We drop them and we use expressions like in order to, so as to, or for plus a verb in the ing form, the gerund form. Negative perps. For negative perps we use in order not to or so as not to. Remember, not is placed before to. Let's consider this situation, this example. She came home early she didn't want to have problems with her parents. Huh? She didn't want to. Uh, that, that was her objective. We join by saying, she came home early, says not to have problems with her parents. Look at not, it is placed before the two. So as not to have problems with her parents. We drop, she didn't want to. We use the expression of purpose, so as not to. And we join the two sentences expression perps remark if we want to repeat the subject we use 
in order that or so that to express purpose. Well, the subject, it can be the same person, the same subject, or two different subjects. And the construction goes like this. In order that or so that plus subject plus can and can't, or can't, will or won't. And this happens when the situation is in the present. Examples. She opens her mailbox. She wants her friends to see John's email. We join by saying, she opens her mailbox so that her friends can see John's email. Another example, she puts the presents away. She doesn't want the children to see them. We join by saying, she puts the presents away so that the children won't see them. As you can see, both situations are in the present. She opens, eh? look at opens. And in the second one, she puts, eh? look at puts, it's the present. Uh, the first one is affirmative. She wants eh, her friends to see John's email. So we say so that her friends can see John's email. We use can because it's the present. Look at the second one. Uh, she doesn't want. It's once again present, but it's in the negative. We say so that her friends won't see them. Um, we use won't because it's the present. The past. Now, if we have a past situation, we use in order that or so that plus subject plus could or couldn't plus verb, of course, or would or wouldn't, depending on the situation, affirmative or negative, plus, of course, verb. Examples. They went three hours earlier to the theater. They wanted to get a good seat. Huh? Went. It's the past, isn't it? They wanted, it's the past. So that was a purpose in the past. Let's join the sentences. They went three hours earlier to the theater so that they could or would get a good seat. Huh? We use could or would. The second situation or the second example, he worked hard at school. He didn't want to fail the national exam. So worked is in the past. Didn't want is also in the past. So here we are talking about a situation in the past. We join by saying, he worked hard at school in order that he couldn't or wouldn't fail the national exam. Worked, uh, couldn't, wouldn't. Remember this. Uh, overall, uh, we have a present situation and it goes, well, when we repeat the subject, uh, can or can't, will or won't. Uh, the past could or would, uh, couldn't or wouldn't. That's how it goes. Look, in this example, she opens her mailbox. She wants her friends to see John's email. So she, uh, that's one person, and her friends, that's another subject, uh, other people. So we have two different subjects. And then we join by saying she opens her mailbox so that her friends can see John's mail. So she opens and her friends can see two different subjects. Look at this one. They went three hours earlier to the theater. They wanted to get a good seat. So it's they who went three hours earlier to the theater. And it's also they, uh, the same people, the same subject, who wanted to get a good seat. So here it's the same subject. But with so that and in order that, we repeat the subject, that it is the, sa the same or different. And we use could or would because it's the past. In the present, of course, as we said, we can use can or will in the negative, uh, can't or won't, okay? So the subject can be the same or we can have different subjects. The summary. It looks like a diagram, doesn't it? But it also sums up all that you need to express perps. The first one is what we may call perps of the infinitive. We have in order to, so as to, and for plus gerund. Look at that example we saw earlier. James works overtime, he wants to improve his situation. 
Now working overtime is working more than the other employees. Uh, staying more hours uh, in the work, right? In the workplace. We join by saying James works overtime in order to improve his situation. Or James works overtime for improving, huh? Jeremy for improving his situation. We can also have the negative and we use in order not to or so as not to. Um, like in this, she came home early and we saw this example earlier. She didn't want to have problems with her parents. So we join. She came home early so as not to have problems with her parents. Now, when we want to repeat the subject, we use, as we said, in order that or so that. Of course, in the past plus could or couldn't, would or wouldn't, as in this example. He worked hard at school. He didn't want to fail the national exam. So he worked hard at school in order that he couldn't or wouldn't fail the exam. When we have the present, we use in order that or so that plus subject plus can or can't depending on the situation whether it is negative or positive or will or won't look at the example she opens her mailbox she wants her friend to see john's email so i would join by saying she opens her email box so that her friends can see john's mail huh? so this diagram sums up perhaps everything you need to express perps using in order to or in order that so as to or so that uh, we have also a distinction between the negative and the affirmative a distinction when it comes to in order that and so that between the present and the past practice pause the video and look at each two sentences at a time and join them using the expression between parentheses at the end of the sentence. Pause the video, get concentrated on the two parts of each sentence and join them. Show me a good job. Another exercise, fill in the blanks with so as to, so as not to or so that. Pause the video again. Read the sentences carefully and fill in the blank with the right expression. Mind you, uh, you can also always go back to the lesson and see which expression actually fits the context. My lesson has come to an end and I am sure you can express perhaps in different contexts using either the same subject or different subjects in the affirmative or in the negative, in the present or in the past, I'm sure. You can also produce your own examples, I mean free examples, and put them as comments down the video. I shall have a look at them as usual and correct them for you. Thank you very much for listening to me and ta-ta for now.